many of you know the lyrics to Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi? How many of you feel happy and empowered and like you really are halfway there when you sing it at the top of your lungs in the car or in the shower or wherever you sing it? How many of you have seen movies like Dirty Dancing or The Notebook and you admire and yearn for that kind of romantic love? Or how many of you have felt deeply moved by characters like Forrest Gump or Guido Refice in Life is Beautiful or Solomon Northup and Patsy in 12 Years a Slave, and books that have changed our lives and the way that we see the world, philosophy books, spiritual books, novels, biographies, diaries, retellings, and paintings and drawings that make us feel hatred, or love, or fear, or confusion. Art tells stories of experiences of things that happened or maybe something someone imagined or dreamt. These stories are told through a universal language that we can all understand. Like that feeling you get when you listen to the first four chords of a song and you know that it's going to be a sad song. Or like that first shot in a movie that somehow lets you know what the rest of the movie will be like. And we can all somehow understand this language this unspoken truth of art. Art teaches us some of the most important human values, like creativity, collaboration, ownership over your work, to feel emotions and to share those emotions with other people. My name is Emilia Acevedo, and I am an artist. I am an actress, a singer, a dancer, a writer, and a director. I couldn't quite make my mind up. <laughs> I have had the great opportunity to be an artist in a world where the arts aren't very supported. They are just kind of there. You roll up on New York, you go to Broadway, you watch a show, and then you go on with your life without really thinking about the people that are on the stage as characters or as people, what their life looks like, the kind of work and effort that they had to go through to be on the stage for eight shows a week. We don't really think about the stories that are being told much further than stepping out of the movie theater or once in a blue moon in actual theater. But the fact that someone believed that their story was worth telling, that they chose to put it out there for the whole world to see, now that takes some work. We have relied on storytelling for pretty much as long as we know. Storytelling is the most important medium through which we share our human experience and others are able to understand and connect to us without having that same human experience. Over the last four years of my life, I have sought to understand the meaning of art and why it is such an important part of our lives as humans. And I have kind of come to a rough conclusion. It allows us to understand each other without being a part of the same community, or even speaking the same language, or feeling the same way. Music transmits a certain emotion, and stories remind us of certain instances in our own lives, and images give us a glimpse into a life that isn't our own. We are learning about each other through art. Then again, why are the arts still not prioritized in our educational systems? Why are they still just a quota that needs to be fulfilled instead of being a requirement that it's valued for its incredible human power of empathy and understanding? When I was in the eighth grade, a woman from Ireland was hired to be our drama teacher. She was the first teacher I had ever had who actually felt passionate about the arts, passionate enough to fight the administration for us to have the budget to put together one musical a year. Mind you, this musical had costumes and a set built by the students in our visual arts class with white cloth, rope, and paper. It was still amazing. I was one of the only students who had had enough exposure to the arts that I kind of knew how to sing, and I really liked musicals, so I got cast in Mamma Mia. I have had the great fortune to have supportive parents who have always encouraged me to do what I feel in my heart. And I remember walking out of the theater that day and my dad looking at me with tears in his eyes and telling me, you have to do this. 
He saw how much the arts meant to me. Now, keep in mind that my dad cries every time he watches The Voice, but still. <laughs> I didn't make much of it then, but the idea of a boarding arts high school sounded incredible. And most importantly, my parents could afford it. I grew up in Mexico City, where we have 130 theaters, more than in any other state in the country. Veracruz being the state with the second highest number of theaters with 26 of them. Meanwhile, in New York City, there are currently 236 shows being produced only on Broadway and off-Broadway theaters. The rest of the population in Mexico have close to no accessibility to the theater arts whatsoever, and it's not just because they can't afford it, but because it doesn't exist. The government manages to come up with different priorities or excuses every year to redirect the resources that should be given to the growth and development of culture. It was even argued in 2013 that despite Mexico being a culturally mega diverse country, the state was lacking stability due to the government prioritizing culture. Now, this doesn't sound quite right to me when the state with the second highest number of theaters has 26 theaters. Now, my parents were able to afford a, a, an arts education for me, as opposed to the other 94% of the population in Mexico who cannot afford singing lessons and acting classes and dance classes and much less paying for their children to go to a boarding school abroad. My mother would spend hours upon hours in the car driving me from one lesson to another because they were so scarce around the city with her full-time job and other responsibilities in the equation as well. Other families don't even have this opportunity because the arts are not accessible to them. They cannot afford any lessons at all, and these are not provided as a part of their day-to-day -day education. I can't help but wonder if the arts had such a big impact on my life. What kind of impact would they have on the lives of other people and children if they had access to them? If they knew that they can tell their story through a language that everyone can understand and that the world will listen. There are art requirements in schools, but they are rarely taken seriously in any educational system that I have been a part of. This is the most important challenge the arts face today. They are not taken seriously. They are regarded as something that is just there. People do it for the enjoyment of others, but rarely anyone stops to think about the craft itself, the work that was put behind it, and the reason why it is being made apart from entertainment. This is a concept that most artists understand because we know what we are doing art for. We know the message and the emotion that we put into our art, and we know what we are trying to say when we say it. We have the means through which to tell our story. But what about all of the other artists that don't have the means through which to tell their story? We live in a world where empathy is incredibly lacking. We see people suffer every day, and we do not feel like it is our responsibility to help them because we are not directly affected by them, and we don't understand what they are going through. People are scared to say how they feel because it is regarded as a weakness instead of it being an incredible sign of strength to speak for what you care about. When did we decide that telling your story and being vulnerable was weak? When was it labeled as gay? We are taught to live in competition instead of understanding. To seek to never be vulnerable, but rather to put up walls that will push us forward and stop others from catching up to us in our economies, our societies, our friendships, and even our families. The arts are a means of connection, of understanding, and of vulnerability, which are exactly what the world needs today. As artists, it is not our job to have the answers to these problems, but rather to ask the questions that get people thinking about what is going on in the world what people's lives look like, when, what they looked like before, and what they might look like in the future. We need to set the stage for people to tell their story, to be able to understand, and to bridge the divide between ignorance and empathy. I invite you to let yourself be moved by someone else's story, to listen to that song and let those first four chords touch your heart, 
maybe even cry like my dad, to tell other people's stories and to care about what they have to say. One of my favorite playwrights, her name is Lynn Nottage, and she wrote a play set during the Civil War in the Republic of the Congo. She is American, yet she saw how the lives of men and women were being affected by the war, and she cared. Her play is titled Ruined, and she won a Pulitzer Prize for it. She cared about all of the people that she wrote about, and because of that, she made others care. I invite you to let yourself care for other people, and not only when it's easy, but also when it feels uncomfortable. There is already too much competition in the world, too much selfishness and pushing others down to lift yourself up. Imagine a world in which we all grow together, a world in which we want others to do well, in which we aren't scared to tell the stories of the people and the places and the things that we care about, a world in which we choose to understand and to empathize with those who we don't know. I invite you to let yourself tell your own story, to put it out there for the whole world to see, to have emotions and to not be scared to put those emotions out in the world. And at the same time, support the art of others, care for the people around you, and most importantly, truly listen to what they have to say. Thank you, gracias. <laughs> Thank you.